What do you do when you've tried hypnosis and it doesn't work? This is a very legitimate and valid, valid, legitimate question. And to answer it accurately, we really have to take a look at hypnosis itself. There are so many ingredients that go into results in hypnosis, and it's not complex. There are just multiple things to consider. And when someone reaches out to me and says, you know, I want to know what it's like to work with you, but I'm skeptical. I've done hypnosis before and it did not work. How do I know it's going to work with you? When I have a conversation with someone who's been in this situation, what I like to do is dive into, well, what type of hypnosis have you done? Because this is a key factor in understanding what may have led to the lack of results. And we're going to break it down here today. So some people have never visited, had a session with a hypnotist. They find videos on how to learn to induce self-hypnosis. In order to really have a good experience with hypnosis, having a, an understanding of hypnosis itself is important. And having had the opportunity to be a student in the coaching program where I became a referral hypnotist and having observed people who ended up becoming my clients in the coaching environment as we all were, and then observing what happened after we did our work together, I've developed a great deal of insight around this that goes beyond what I was taught in my training. So for people who watch videos to learn how to do self-hypnosis. Probably the biggest things that get in the way are number one, there's a lack of understanding that hypnosis is not relaxation. I heard yet again, just the other day, another professional hypnotist explaining hypnosis is a profound state of relaxation. That is not true. Hypnosis is a state of mind. And when you get into that focus state of mind, your parasympathetic nervous system may become activated, especially if your brain goes into a theta brainwave state. Your parasympathetic nervous system gets activated and you have this huge release of serotonin, melatonin, endorphins, and enkephalins, and you enter this bliss state, a profound state of relaxation. But hypnosis is not relaxation. It is a state of focused attention with a bypass of the critical analytical thinking part of the mind. So if you're an overthinker, you know what I'm talking about, the critical analytical thinking part of the mind, the part that wants to figure everything out. That's all hypnosis is. So when people want to do self-hypnosis and they're learning from videos how to do self-hypnosis, the lack of relaxation that one might experience when you're learning causes people to believe they can't do it. The other thing is because they're looking for this relaxation or they're expecting something to happen the mind begins to look for that. So now we're actually engaging our thinking analytical mind instead of bypassing it. Now, can you learn self-hypnosis on your own? Absolutely. And it's going to be different for everyone. Now, there's something else that impacts every type of hypnosis, whether it's self-hypnosis, it's a classical hypnosis, a hypnosis audio, or even the deep-seated root cause work that I do. And that is the impact of your day. 
if you have had a stressed, harried day and there is a lot going on, you may not settle as deeply in the hypnosis. You may not go as deep as you would like to go. We tend to forget that when we're talking about hypnosis, this is not happening inside of a vacuum. Life happens. So I will ask people what type of hypnosis you're doing. And if they say that they're learning to do self-hypnosis and it's without the guidance of a hypnotist, that's the first thing. The second thing is I'll ask, well, when you started, did you believe hypnosis would work? And they may something say something along the lines of, well, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty desperate. I'll try anything, but nothing else has worked. Why would this work? The lack of belief that hypnosis could work will keep it from working. You've already hypnotized yourself into believing hypnosis will work. So that's a big thing. I believe it was Henry Ford that said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're probably right. I'm going to take that quickly and translate it to a client I had once. It was when I first learned conversational hypnosis and she came in to stop smoking, catch this. She only smoked one cigarette a day. She had gotten down to one cigarette a day all by herself. So that first session, I thought, oh, this is, she was in a great state of mind. I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. I did conversational hypnosis with her. She didn't have another cigarette. But she came back for her second session because I always did it in two sessions unless somebody was an emotional stress smoker. And when she came back, her daughter was with her and her daughter pulled me aside. She goes, I want you to know she's really pissed at you. I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, she hasn't had a cigarette, but she's really mad that you didn't hypnotize her last time. I said, what did she think was going to happen last time? She goes, well, she thought that you were going to pull out a pendulum and, and hypnotize her. Okay, I got this. So I took her back. I had her tell me about her week. She had not had a cigarette. It worked. But she was angry because she believed that in order to be a non-smoker, that I had to take a pendulum and put her into trance. So what did I do? That's right. Because she had hypnotized herself into believing that if she was going to stay a non-smoker, that was what she needed. And actually, I had this happen just last year with someone else who was having an issue with writer's block. And we did the, did the hypnosis. It was beautiful. And then they reached back out and they're like, hey, you know, I'm just really disappointed that we didn't actually do hypnosis. And believe me, they were subconscious a lot. Conversational hypnosis is not about a pendulum or a formal induction and talking to you about relaxation. It's a, we spontaneously tap into our subconscious mind all the time throughout the day, which is why I tell people to be careful what you're bringing into your world, news, media, music, conversations, the whole nine yards. So what did I do? I, I did what he needed to believe that he had been hypnotized for the result he had already gotten. I don't have a problem with that because in that moment, I realized it hypnotized themselves. When you're doing hypnosis with people, you use what they bring to the table to, to help them. So when it comes to hypnosis audios, people will say, oh, I've listened to audios. They don't work. With self-hypnosis, with hypnosis audios, and working with a hypnotist, that is one sliver out of your day, out of your life. The other 99.5% of your week or of your day is where you are in your head. And if you are constantly talking about what it is that you're dealing with in your life as the glass is half empty as opposed to half full, the other 99.5% of the time, you are talking yourself out of your result on some level. Because when we're speaking of things negatively, that 
displays fear, that displays doubt, that displays a lack of self-belief. So we want to really pay attention to where that self-talk is. But the other thing about hypnosis audios is that most hypnosis audios have a 10 to 15 minute hypnotic induction. In other words, it's 10 to 15 minutes before you get to the good stuff. If you are an overthinker, about four or five minutes in, you're going to be sitting there going, Jesus, would they just get to the freaking point already? I want my hypnosis for more confidence. I don't want to be focused on my toes and whether or not they're twitching or they're relaxed. Long drawn out inductions are not required. But if you're an overthinker or you are a busy person or you have on your mind that you've got to go do this other thing, your impatient is going to impact the effectiveness of that because we have attachments and expectations, right? We have beliefs around what the hypnosis is going to be like. So what I do, particularly in the Catalyst Audio Vault, I created something called the Quick Drop Theta Hypnosis. And this is a priming hypnosis. The way that it's set up is I ask you for three days, listen to that at least twice a day before you dive into the other hypnosis audios. And here's the reason why. I designed that hypnosis to help even the busiest of minds learn to train their brain to go into hypnosis. And there's also confidence building and you feel really good uh, listening to it. It's 11 minutes, but you are training your brain to enter the state of focus attention and to enter hypnosis. And we're also creating an anchor so that when we go to the other hypnosis audios, the hypnotic induction is only two to three minutes because I've embedded this anchor that you teach yourself when you're in the hypnosis you train yourself to associate hypnosis to this anchor so that when you want to come in, and then if we're doing a 10 to 15 minute hypnosis audio, it's like two or three minutes induction and the rest of it is, is the good stuff. So if hypnosis audios aren't working, it could be a number of things. Maybe the tone of the person's voice doesn't resonate with you. Maybe you don't like the metaphors that they're using Maybe it's expectation of what you should be experiencing. Maybe the induction is too long. Maybe it's too slow for your busy mind. You don't have to relax. So if self-hypnosis is not working, I ask those questions. Now, there are self-hypnosis audios out there where you fill in the blanks. There is space in there for you to create your own visual imagery, or to say things to yourself, set your intentions, what you want. If you're not um, familiar with how to phrase those things, you could accidentally be programming yourself for what you don't want. So in other words, someone may say, I am confident, so I'm no longer afraid to get on stage. Your brain doesn't hear no longer. It hears afraid. If someone didn't want to be, let's say, wine, chocolate, right? You're not going to say, I no longer think about chocolate. You're going to see anytime I see chocolates in a candy dish, I can simply look at them and be so proud of myself that I'm okay without that that I'm happier without it, that it feels so good to be in control and know that if I wanted one, I could have it, but I'm choosing to enjoy my day without chocolate. There are so many ways that we can fra uh, phrase things that if we're not careful, we're introducing the thing that we don't want. And that slows us down. When it comes to doing hypnosis with the hypnotist and not getting results. There's classical hypnosis, which is scripts. There are different types of root cause work. And this is where it really requires a conversation 
to pull things apart because I have had people, there are a small amount of people who do not respond to hypnotic suggestion. And it's because the mind in my understanding is a little more hypervigilant. Now I've only ever had three people. I could not get into deep hypnosis. One of them had a brain injury. One had trauma that was so intense. Her mind just would not let go. She didn't tell me she had trauma, but after observing what was going on without a doubt, there was a huge degree of hypervigilance. And then I had someone who just decided they didn't want to let go. We really have to explore what happened in the hypnosis because there are things that we deal with. There are symptoms, people pleasing, overeating, drinking too much wine, procrastinating. These things are all symptoms. And if only the symptom was addressed and not the root cause, then it, it may or may not get better. All hypnosis, all hypnosis basically creates an opportunity to introduce new ideas to the subconscious mind. And then the subconscious mind can then decide. You've heard me talk about deciding. The subconscious mind can choose the best path with hypnosis scripts, classical hypnosis, certain types of timelines and all of these things. It, it can take longer because it's a more, ah, it's a more superficial approach. The other thing is, is did the hypnotist guide you deep enough into hypnosis that you're actually able to access your belief system? That can happen with classical hypnosis. That can happen with scripts, but it's not typically not an intentional process. When doing directed root cause work, achieving that deeper level of hypnosis is a directed process. And with the hypnosis that I do and that I train people to do, we actually have a feedback mechanism so that we know if the client is there without creating a situation where the client thinks, oh my gosh, is this not working? But we're able to get that feedback and, and we know whether or not it's working. Getting those insights comes from the client comes from the client. Doing deep root cause work, I do not give people new beliefs. I coach them through discovering the belief that best suits them in, in that moment. The belief that is going to allow them to create the life that they want. Now, even with root cause hypnosis, if there is a habitual, so we have belief level insights, but if there is a habitual pattern of thinking because it can be stimulated by beliefs and perceptions or it could be pure habit or both if it has become habitual we have to retrain the brain and this takes conscious effort outside of hypnosis to retrain the brain to think about things in terms of the glass half full not the glass half empty and part of that can be addressed through hypnosis as well. Because if you were to ask me at first glance, that screams a lack of self-trust to me. And that is a layer of an issue that could be addressed. Now, I also love to practice conversational hypnosis. And the conversational hypnosis is unique. So when I do directed root cause hypnosis, we go in, we stretch, we pull, we bust beliefs. And this is what I train new hypnotists to do. We, we go through this process, how to in, identify, release stuck emotions, all of these things. When you have insight in that process, we go in and we lay down new beliefs. And those new beliefs come from the client before we even start the session. I investigate and find out what they want. And I'm basically giving the client's words back to them in that state. With conversational hypnosis, what we do is we find that false belief and we stretch that false belief out until we pop that loop. When we've broken that loop, it creates that same state for a new belief to be laid down. But in that moment, the client may not know what is the best operational belief for them. 
And it's a matter of going through and allowing the mind to collapse the peripheral beliefs and on its own adopt a new way of being. We call this processing in conversational hypnosis. Processing can take a few hours. It can take a day or two, or it can take weeks. I have had clients that we have gotten them a breakthrough in two calls. So we do one call, they process for a couple of weeks, but there's still something there. It's not quite done. We meet for a second call. We break through all of that and it'll take two, three, four weeks. I'll check in with people. How's your processing? What are your insights? What are your ahas? How is your, how's your outcome progressing? There is a way, and I see this in hypnotists. It drives me insane. People are afraid to follow up with their clients because they've been taught by other hypnotists, no, 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 don't follow up with them and ask them how they're doing, because then they're going to think that you question the result that you got them. There are ways to ask the question to do a status check without introducing doubt. And that is to say, hey, I would love to know what further insights you've had. When we connected, you had this insight. What else has happened? I'm excited to hear what other things have happened. How else has this impacted your life? It also allows them to connect the dots between the transformation, the breakthrough, and the other things that have happened. And it can take three, four weeks. I have followed up with people and, and we would talk back and forth and I would just message them back. I'm like, I can tell through our conversation, you are still processing. You aren't done yet. I'll check in a couple of weeks and see what else is coming up for you. So it can take days or it can take a few weeks. So if you've had conversational hypnosis and it's taking you time to process, it may take a while before you fully see the results. And a lot of people out there who do conversational hypnosis, they tout a single session resolution have I gotten resolutions in one session? Yes. Is that typical? No. And that is because most of my clients are coming to me for identity related issues, which has multiple layers. There are a lot of things to, to dig into. The thing about conversational hypnosis is that when you're processing after conversational hypnosis, you do not want to be meditating you do not want to be using affirmations. You do not want to be using self-hypnosis because you will actually interfere with the processing. I also do not coach people. So when I work with someone purely conversationally, it's very different than when I do my deeper signature transformation, which is eight to 10 weeks. The conversational process looks different. So if your hypnosis is not working, those are some things to think about that I have mentioned here. What are your expectations? Have you had a good hypnosis pre-talk? Oh my gosh, I, I can tell you that I do hypnosis pre-talks with my clients. It's actually recorded, but I also cover it when we touch base. And sometimes we're so excited and we just really want the breakthrough that even though someone tells us something, our own expectation underneath the surface actually will override that. So I've told many people hypnosis is not relaxation. And then at the end of our session, they'll go, I wasn't relaxed at all. I'm like, I told you, you wouldn't be relaxed. The style of hypnosis I do is not relaxation hypnosis. Relaxation hypnosis is a feel good hypnosis. We're going for the breakthrough. We're going for the transformation. And there's usually not anything relaxing about it unless I'm teaching a very specific mind, body, spirit, self-hypnosis. And then at the end, it gets really, really relaxing in that sense. When someone reaches out to train with me, or if you're interested in hypnosis training, Listening to this episode, you might be thinking, well, holy crap, how do I know what hypnosis training to take? 
you just shared so much it's overwhelming this is why i teach a systematic process and it's the process that i take my clients through but within this process you learn the skills that if you only wanted to do hypnosis audios and classical hypnosis and lead group hypnosis, you get what you need for that. But then you also get the systematic process to help people shift these misperceptions and beliefs and get a breakthrough and release the emotions tied to those things. Now, when it comes to conversational hypnosis, I teach a true in pure conversational hypnosis and my conversational hypnosis is not a part of my entry level professional hypnosis certification my conversational hypnosis training is for people already experienced in hypnosis and understands the subconscious because there is not a certification with that training there are no language patterns there are no inductions there are no timelines there's none of that stuff. And we haven't gotten the website updated yet, but the conversational hypnosis programs are the masters one and two conversational hypnosis. If you're wanting to become a hypnotist, you're new to hypnosis, then what you want is the professional hypnosis certification that teaches the systematic process. And once you've learned that and you've seen some clients and you've gotten a grasp for okay, I am seeing what it's like to work with the subconscious now. I'm seeing these patterns. Then you're ready to dive into the master's level one and level two. My next hypnosis certification training is in July, the 28th through August 3rd. If you're hearing this in the early part of July, you have plenty of time. Go sign up now. And I will get your training materials out to you ASAP. We will get you added to the self-study area ASAP. It's only 25 to 30 hours of self-study before you can enter live training. And I would love to have you there. If you're curious about doing hypnosis with me, I will put the link in the show notes. Book a call. Let's explore what that looks like together. And I will see you all next week.